full! Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video we'll be reviewing the Kriegsmesser by Cold Steel. Now, I've been wanting to get my hands on a Kriegsmesser for a good while, and the one that Cold Steel, you know, advertised, actually looks really, really good in terms of the profile and look that you want, yet this is the style that I think a lot of people are very interested in, more so I think because of the popularity of the Albion's Kriegsmesser. The previous type of sword in this range, which was Cold Steel's Gross Messer, has been reviewed a number of times, and uh, didn't look that good, in all honesty. But uh, this one, like I said, it seems to be patterned after the uh, Albion style, and just kind of the uh, overall profile, the shaping and design, it, it looks really promising. And getting it and getting it in my hands, I mean, there are, like, there are some really, really, like, good things to uh, uh, observe about this sword off the bat. Now, the other thing that really interested me about this sword was the price range. This is far more on the affordable range of swords, especially for Kriegsmessers of this style. That very much intrigues me. I, I tend to be attracted not only because of price, but for, I, I'm attracted to the more affordable range of swords that are still, hopefully, functional and usable. Uh, and so I want to find the most affordable ones that are still uh, basically battle ready. Not only, like, yeah, price is good, okay, but I think I like that it's more accessible for a wide range of people. And sometimes, what's also interesting is, uh, I think, <laughs> It's funny, even this this sword, like the level of fit and finish and polish and precision that comes from kind of machine finishing is already higher than what you would find on most historical swords. Uh, the the mid-range of historical swords would actually have a decent amount of imperfections and they couldn't get as profine and specific finishes on the steel quality as well as uh, the uh, you know heat treatment on the blade. And so for a lower end sword in the modern day, well not, it's not the lowest end here, but it's in the more affordable range for functional serious swords, right? This is already probably much higher quality than you would get in a historical setting. So that is really just intriguing. And uh, so I like to see, all right, where are swords at in this price range? They're more accessible and sometimes they're some more parallels. Now, of course, like the premium quality of swords that you can get in the modern day, well, they're kind of analogous to the, the, the highest quality. When, when you look at the highest quality in the middle period, you're looking at some insane, you know, detailed gold stuff, you know, you know with pattern and embroidered inlays and all, all those things, right? Um, and even the best of the best sometimes wouldn't be able to match certain qualities of the lower end. First impressions and, and uh, observations of the sword is uh, the weight is just gorgeous. Like just feeling this, right? You know, like like this is a really usable sword. We also we always have to do the uh, the flourish test. So, all right, it flourishes about similar to a katana, honestly, because the curve it's only got a very slight curve, but it doesn't have a perfect kind of balance in terms of spinning. Not that you'll be doing too much of that, but in terms of uh, actual use. All right, this thing it feels beautiful. Now for the official way in of the Kriegsmesser by Cold Steel. And we'll have a look at this. All right, it's heavier than I actually thought. It's 1.5, basically 1.55 kilos. This is nimble and easy to use in the hand. And 1.5 is very reasonable for a two-handed sword. And uh, oh, it's very functional as well. If we come in close and have a look at the fit and finish now, I honestly have no complaints, like these are some really, really tight fits right here. With the two halves of the, of the handle being riveted together, there's no, barely any gaps, barely any gaps at all. It is all very, very solid. In terms of the fit of the cross guard and blade, we see, you know, well there's a gap there, but not huge. Like that's perfectly reasonable, I feel. And then if we have a look at the lines of the sword, fuller lines only have the slightest bit of waving on the edges. Nothing that you would actually really see on profile. Only when you look really close on angle, do you see some of these w tiny wobbly lines, but I've seen worse. Like it's actually very close to near 
perfectly straight with only the slightest bits of imperfections. Um, the blade has a very distinct uh, distal taper, which of course, you know, explains why the balance is so nice on this sword. But we are looking at nearly a good four mil at the base and going down to easy two mil um, at the tip. And it's all very, very consistent. The temper, just gorgeous, right? Absolutely gorgeous. But overall from uh, a more casual kind of perspective and look, this sword, I, I actually think is so far gorgeous, right? Uh, the weight is just unbelievable. Like you could easily fight with this one hand because the weight is just so good with this thing. Like this is just a beautiful sword, right? Uh, that makes me really like it. So overall in terms of design, fit and finish, weight, and uh, you know, um, grind lines and stuff on the blade. This is top marks uh, for me. Looking at the quality that you're getting for the price range of this sword, top marks. Might not hold up the best to the cream of the crop of the type of swords you can get, but there are very few manufacturers making Kriegsmessers of this quality, and especially in this price, price range, uh, which makes me like, just for what you get, the bang for your buck, this is, this is real top tier. But how well does it cut? How are we gonna find that out? Now in terms of the edge, it's come with, it's got an edge. Um, it's actually a, a, a sharper edge than um, some of the uh, other swords I've gotten, but it is not shaving sharp by any means. If I try and shave some hairs, nah. We are, we are not cutting any hairs there, uh, but we'll see how well it cuts paper. So let's just see how sharp it is out of the box in terms of paper cutting, starting up here. That's not bad, that's not bad. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, out of the box sharpness actually. Uh, very decent, honestly, <laughs> that, that, that was better than I was expecting. So I purchased this one from Cult of Athena. Great place uh, to get wide range of swords at a good price. I've had issues or buying swords from Australia to ship to me, and I've had less issues buying from Cult of Athena, which is an international shipping source. If you're buying from overseas, just know what the um, kind of shipping regulations, stuff like that. I, you do usually have to pay an import tax on items like this for us in Australia. And also most definitely know the laws uh, where you live in regards to the legality of them. And so, I will mention just some of the historical context of this sword. I actually have a little short I made explaining the whole mystery of why, why is it called a knife? Because in German, Messer means knife. Kriegsmesser, uh, I think is war knife. And so, <laughs> why do they call it a knife? It, well, it's made by, like a knife, okay? So it has a full tang. If we have a look here, see the tang goes fully on each side, right? And the fit and finish is that in the, the same construction you have with a knife, not a sword. And if you wanna know why they did that, well, check out the Shadowversity short. Or you could check out this dedicated video, which is a deep dive on this very subject. In addition to any of those points, one of the other things that people usually say about, you know, messes like this, and, and so there's one-handed messes, uh, shorter, and sometimes they're called Lang's Messer, um, just uh, so you can know if you're talking about the one-handed versions or the two-handed versions. And they were very popular in the areas of medieval Germany, which is the Holy Roman Empire at the time, both for the lower class and upper class. First lower class, followed on to the upper class. Though there are certain parallels in, uh, and similarities in other swords that you see uh, in the late medieval period in different areas. Like uh, you could see early types of sabers which have curved blades and, and you know, cruciform cross guards, as well as uh, falchions. Yeah, so if this had a construction of a sword, this would actually be called a falchion, a two-handed falchion, uh, if it, not changing anything on the blade. Uh, one of the distinctive features of a messer is this side guard right here. This is called a nagel, which is just nail in German, right there. And so the nagel is where we start to see some additional things added to the blade uh, to uh, protect the hand to a greater measure. Now, some people have also said that this is the European equivalent of the katana. I get where it comes from, you know, it's a single-edged 
semi-curved blade, but in terms of profile and design, uh, when I say design, I'm talking about the actual, if you, if you were to cut the blade in half and look at the cross section, there's a significant amount of differences. Usually, like Kriegsmessers have a wider blade and they are more narrow on the, uh, you know, distal plane, and they have greater distal taper. And so they will generally cut differently. Still, this is a beastly, beastly cutter. We'll see if this model is, but generally speaking, Kriegs messes and messes were made to cut, right? And they were known for that. Uh, I, like, it's just a cool sword, man. I mean, I've got Tyrant here, and he likes katanas better. Why? This is so cool! Because they're magical, and they have power. Oh yeah, they can cut through space and time, I forgot about that part. Okay, let me clarify. I love the katana, it's actually a very sexy sword, okay? It does get overhyped, and I always just push to try and get things back in balance, but it has very distinct features, and also benefits from its design, that other swords don't, but it's not the best sword in the world. And in terms of some of the great features of a katana, there are other swords that can match, you know, it's, it's cutting capacity, and so I wonder when people say it's the European katana, the mesa, no, 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 well first off, the katana is the Japanese mesa, let's get that, <laughs> look, I'm doing it to meme, okay, all right, but I wonder if they say that because it can fill the same general role that a katana would be able to fill, though, in terms of length, it's on the, it's, they're a little shorter than some full length long swords, uh, but I think they're on average actually a bit longer than the standard katana. And again, there's differences in its profile, its finish, also, oh by the way, the way it's made. Uh, the best quality European swords, okay, not all of them, but if you want to look, compare best to best, because by the way, there were really crap Japanese swords made, alright, they, they weren't all like perfect, like where they nailed the differential tempering perfectly, there was a lot of crap ones, right? But if you hear best of the best, you are comparing spring steel for the European swords, right? And that has some huge advantages in terms of its durability and stuff. And so, uh, and also, just let's have a look at the vibration on this thing. So, fine. There we go. So, vibration node right there. Ooh, look at that. And so, we see the vibration node is about right there. That's generally called the sweet spot for cutting. You can't generally do that with a katana. Katanas are made to have a thicker spine and to reduce the amount of vibration. There's advantages to that. It makes them actually more forgiving in the cuts, but it also means that they're not as durable against really high stresses where something causes the blade to bend. Well, a katana will stay bent, okay? It's not a springed type of sword, and that's purely due to the differential hardening and the type of steel, because it's, it's a multi type of steel. Usually it has a, a, a very low carbon to near iron core and a high carbon edge, but as a result, you can't temper the whole thing into, you know, martensite spring steel, whereas the best quality European swords you can. And so there's a bit of a trade-off. I tend to prefer having a sword spring and be more durable, and you just need to figure out your edge alignment in the cut and you're good to go. So with that out of the way, let's Let's see how well this cuts water bottles. Why do we cut water bottles? I've got a short. You can check it out. This is not even a minute long uh, to find out why we cut water bottles with swords in testing. But we're not only doing that, we will stress test this thing, cutting some wood over on the Shadlands. At first, water bottles. I am expecting this to do well. I've been wrong before, and usually it's because my expectations were too low, and then the sword I'm testing with cut way better than I expected. So I could be wrong in the opposite direction, expecting this to cut well and not do as good as I expected. The thing is though, it's sharp enough to cut paper decently well. I don't think it was cutting that paper as easily as the um, uh, United Cutlery, uh, you know, one-handed, I think it's a one-handed broadsword, that I sharpened myself. So with extra sharpening, this can get much, much better, of course, and it's not, you know, shaving sharp. Uh, you would call this almost like chisel sharp. You could, you know, shave some wood with it with some difficulty. But anyway, that should be sh well sharp enough to get through this with ease. We will see you. Smooth. Not bad, not bad. How long were these bottles lying there? A long time. In the hot, in the hot shed? Since <laughs> Alright, that was nice. That one was very good. And look at that, we got a very smooth cut. Uh, 
comparing it against some of the other swords we reviewed, the um, the Claymore by United Cutlery's Honshu line uh, was getting smoother, kind of twangy, you know, slashes on that. But that could be just like edge geometry could play a part in that, but also longer sword, which meant the uh, the end was moving at a faster rate in comparison, which helped glide through the thing. But still, this is cutting decently well. Ah, that one, ooh, that's actually very smooth. That is looking, ah, look at that, that's very nice. Oh, that was beautiful. Barely felt that at all. As I know, you heard the ting on the blade and look at how smooth that is. It's not bad, not bad. Ah, I don't care. It's like drinking the blood of your enemies. It's something to it, you just gotta do it. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, if we come in really close, this is my observation at the moment. Do we see how the beginning of the cut where it hits here is just a little bit jagged, right? But then it becomes really smooth all the way through. Uh, I've noticed that with the, the number of the cuts. This is another reason why you cut water bottles is you can get feedback uh, and information on how well it's cutting. And so this one is actually quite smooth on the beginning of the cut um, and only gets a little jagged towards the end. What we see here, if we come in close, there is type of like a bit of jaggedness and you can even see the exact spot where the blade started to bite into the bottle right here. Do you, if you can even see that, see this part where my nail is on? That part right there is the initial kind of cutting into the plastic that we see uh, the blade doing. And so it's definitely biting into the plastic, but it gets a bit jagged here, you see there? And so, a bit of jaggedness there. And we see it a bit here, there's a bit of jaggedness here, just on the initial part of the cut. And I think that is probably sharpness, honestly. And uh, what, so that means is, if you sharpen this up even further, you wouldn't be seeing stuff like this. Uh, I think the edge, you know, alignment is actually pretty darn good. We don't see too much curving on the, uh, cuts on the bottle. Have a look here. It's a little bit of curving, but not too much. The edge alignment is mostly good. So uh, we're getting some good feedback and information on how well the blade is cutting. It's doing w quite well for the factory edge. <laughs> There's barely a curve on that and uh, that was really smooth. All right, I'll take it. Tyrant, you can have a go. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna get a far away. Okay, uh, if you have it's a- really light. Yeah, I... Oh, oh, so now you like it more. It is light, isn't it? That's... That's a very, it's a very sexy sword. I think, I think it's important for us to explain just how light this is because if <laughs> you pick up a different sword of comparable size, mm -hmm. they're really heavy and really hard on the wrist. Mm -hmm. This is... This is, I think, lighter than the uh, one-handed broadsword by United Cutley that you really it is, like. It yeah. is. That's, that's yeah. what I'm using as And reference. this is a longer two-handed sword, and so... Because usually it's really hard on the wrist with the broadsword. That one is, well, yeah, but, but it's well, really well balanced, which is why that one is good, and it cuts well as a result because of the weight. But this one, yeah, I, like, surprisingly usable in your hand. Yeah, now, yeah you like it more now! Nice! Yeah, you like it? Yeah, it was good for you. Yeah? And it's super light as well. Super light? Yeah. Nice. Do you, want, do you want to do another one? It's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah how, how did it feel? Did you feel any resistance at all with no. that one? Nope. No, not, no resistance? Just a nice little pop. Yep. That one was a bit more sloppy, but don't worry. Happens to me as well. <laughs> I, don't do, I don't do side strikes very often. Side strikes are harder to get, get clean. But your impressions, Tyrant? I like it. Yeah, I don't. I like I'll it be too. Honest, I don't like this. I don't like the really long guard. What? When I'm trying to give it a bit of a spin, it. Oh well, that's just practice. You learn to um, angle it so it avoids, and it's not an issue when you get used to it. But if you just don't have one and you have a subar or like on. No, what, that, sorry, no, no. You There's no have... argument no. that a cross guard is way superior to a subar for defense. Look, I didn't say for I've, defense. I, I just said I, for spin. Because I've guard. trained with both. I've, I've done done kendo, kenjutsu, right, and. Uh, not extensively, but I started my sword journey with Kendo, and I got the Shanai, and I did heaps of sparring with him. And I remember when I, I will call it an upgrade, I upgraded to a cross guard. I was actually shocked at how much that cross guard can block and and I lock didn't in strikes. I say that it's not going to block. I just said I don't like it banging in. But and you're, Suba, you're wrong yeah, for not no, liking no, 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 no. it. A Suba 
for spinning is superior. No, disagree. You disagree? Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah, really it is. I could even one hand on Yeah, I told you you could one hand that. That's like a really functional, usable sword. And it, that, as a result, it would be fast fighting with it. Yeah. You could really accelerate this thing and get in it. And that's what you want for when you're having a sword in duels. Because that's a thick, that's a thick bit of meat it's, a, it's thick there, it's but it's the distal taper. See, katanas don't have such an aggressive distal taper like this. Do you know what um, steel it's using for that one? This is, I can double check, but it's high carbon spring still, and so I think it's something like in the 1060 something range. We'll, we'll check and put it down because uh, I'm pretty sure they don't have it gone to any of the creative kind of steels that add in bits of silicon and stuff, but if they do, we'll put it in the description to let you know. Is, is this, are we popping your sword cherry here, uh, Marcus? Actually, yes, sir. Oh my goodness! It's a historic moment! Give it a shot. Hey, you got through it! You got through it! This is beautiful. Isn't it nice? Feels nice too. It was over so quickly. <laughs> was it good for you too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad though. We can get some feedback on the cut. Do you see how oh, yeah. ragged it is? Yeah, it is so, a bit like yeah. over So that, here. that's a sign of bad edge alignment yeah. when that happens. And so, yeah. uh, it, look, I'm not perfect at it either. <laughs> it's just a matter of practice. But Still feels satisfying. It is, it is. Yeah, yeah, like, so it's a, look, so far water bottles does well. I don't know why it just feels so good. <laughs> Uh, so, swords, yeah, swords just, they, they make you feel awesome. Alrighty, here at the Shadlands to test out uh, how well this cuts against uh, a more solid target. And look, I've mentioned this in other videos, mentioned here. I think this is tea tree or a type of it, but it's basically a weed, so don't you know, complain about cutting trees, the travesty, it's fine, all right? Um, and then I'll also find some other downed, you know, dead wood uh, to, because this is actually a pretty good medium. It's, it's right in the middle between, uh, because it's fresh and it's live, it's softer than you would if, you know, against dried wood, but it's not like super soft either. Uh, when you get to the thicker stuff, uh, there's a decent amount of resistance in it. So let's uh, see how well this does. I just cut off some of the smaller branches just to clean it, to get into the, the thicker ones I wanna do, but we can still get information from these smaller cuts that I'll be starting with. Like that. Straight through one cut. That's a good start. That's actually a very good start. <laughs> this one is actually a little thicker, so we'll get some good feedback and information from this one. Not bad. So if you haven't seen my other sword reviews, I'll just say it here again, is that wood is not a, like a good target for swords. Swords are not made to chop wood. They're not machetes, okay? And as a result, there's a much higher chances you can damage a sword when you're chopping wood. But a good, properly made sword that's out of good quality steel and has a good temper, should, ta uh, should take a lot of abuse to damage it when you're chopping against wood. But any sword, no matter how good its quality, if you hit something hard enough, all right, that is solid enough, you will eventually damage it. That's just how it happens. And so this is some stress testing to see how well the sword fares against solid targets. It's abusive testing. You don't want to do this with a sword unless you are prepared to damage it, okay? But again, with the other tests, the other swords held up and that's a, it's a good, you know, good indicator for the quality if uh, it can survive the abuse. Because I'm, I'm going to be putting in a you know, a good chunk of strength into these strikes. So this is the uh, first real serious one, okay? Where I'm gonna be throwing a lot of strength into it. So, nice, nice smooth cut there. That one wasn't bad. All right, this is the one that I'm interested in, okay? I will not get through it in one cut and uh, this is mainly to see uh, not only how well it cuts, but how well the sword handles striking into it. Ready? Let's do it. Ah! 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 Wow, actually, that is crazy. Three cuts and we are almost through. That is actually really good. Really good. Smooth. 
Unless I hit the direct exact spot, I won't get through it. And we'll see what, how good my aim is for this one. All right, aiming for that exact same spot. Boom! Okay, that performed really good. I'm gonna go for this one now. Very nice. Gonna shave off these ones and go for the main, main stem again. Ugh, if I can get this one out of my way. Ugh. Like, look at that. Single cut, straight through. Very nice. Oh, I can feel it twisting on these strikes. Oh, I hit something really solid then. Did we damage it? No, no, the blade is still good. If anything would have rolled the edge, whatever I hit then was really solid and I think I feel, but no, it's, it's actually still intact, no damage. Interesting observations, especially when you're hitting something hard enough to give hand shock, the sharp edges of the handle, you see how the handle is made where instead of being rounded, they're actually sharp edges on the sides here they really dig into your palm, uncomfortably so. And so when I hit that, and there was hand shock, do you see that? That's what the handle did right there, the red mark there. Discernibly uncomfortable as a result of the grip. So improvements, they could definitely round off the sides here because, yeah. All right, let's see how well we get through this one here. You see how it goes all the way down right to there. That's a really deep cut into this wood. I don't really see it, but that was that was good. See that red mark on my finger? Okay, that was from it hitting the cross guard, and because it's got almost sharp edges on the cross guard. Okay, now look, you're not gonna run into that issue too much. This is a result of the hand shock from hitting something really solid, but the cross guard and handle are, are not made for the highest amounts of comfort. There's definitely room for improvement here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's a very smooth cut. Going again. So I want, because of the grain of the wood, it causes it to curve when you hit and slide down. Trying to avoid it. There we go cut through the rest of it. That is pretty darn, pretty darn good. Straight through, straight through. So I wanna go through something even more solid. Let's do this one right here. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> Frig it out, so <laughs> So the sword has held up perfectly well so far. Uh, there's obviously scuff marks and everything, and that's mainly from the sap actually. Uh, but once this is cleaned up, no discernible damage as well. And not only that, it performed really well chopping through that tea tree. So, resisted the damage and performed great. Top marks at the moment. Uh, but we're not done yet. I want to test a couple of things. So, first, let's test the, uh, the spring on it. So, look at that. Look at that. That is huge deflection. Are we seeing this? That is huge. Completely true, completely straight. All right, dried dead wood. Let's see how it goes. Uh, if anything will damage and cause it to roll, it'll be stuff like this. So first, let me just smack it into the edge of the log right here, okay? That wasn't very hard. And stuck in, 
it, look, it's uh, in between the grains. I expected something like this, uh, but that's that's pretty good. And look, look at that. Look at the temper on that. I love it. That's gorgeous. All right. That one was a, with a bit more strength. Much more strength. Beautiful. Oh, I think we would be able to get through this. See that? So, look, after such abusive testing, that's almost expected. Um, problem with this type of construction is that I have no idea how you would tighten it because it's, it's mainly fixed in position it, through being riveted on the other side of the nagel. And so if the nagel gets loose and that that rivet gets loose. And there we go. This is the Kriegsmesser by Cold Steel. Uh, as you can see, uh, the blade got quite scuffed and uh, sap got on and other things like that. But overall, uh, it performed really, really well. Of course, very glad I did do the uh, stress testing because we got it, valuable information. And so some of the negatives about the sword, the fact that there are such sharp angles on the handle makes it very uncomfortable when you get significant hand shock. Now in terms of general use, like sparring and the historical context that this was meant for mainly self-defense, you could take it to war as well, uh, but in general use like that you would rarely run into such heavy hand shock uh, compared to you know when you're actually hitting wood, so that might not be as much of an issue uh, for you, um, uh, so that is something to consider, because in general use it feels fine, but it's only when you hit something solid do you really start like Ow, and I did injure myself. I got a blister on this finger and sore redness on my hand. I think I was wearing gloves for the other swords though, so there's a good point because I mean, I did not, I was not a fan of the grip of the broadsword, um, uh, but then with gloves you barely could feel it. So, but look, there's that. Everything else, I mean, I've got almost nothing but praise for this sword, honestly, from my own subjective kind of analysis here. Uh, it cut brilliantly, probably the best cutter, um, or. Ugh. The claymore is difficult. The claymore cut the bottles better, but not the wood better. This cut the wood way, way better. And, you know, that probably makes sense for the type of sword it is. In terms of um, uh, durability, it's pretty up there. Like, the fact that the cross guard got a little loose is, what, but it's not super loose. Uh, but you can certainly feel it and hear it. Uh, and another negative, it'd be very hard to repair. I have no idea how I'd repair this sword. I literally broke the, um, the one-handed broadsword, uh, and I was able to fix it entirely, which is, a, I think that's a bonus, having a, an ability to repair a sword with limited means. I have no idea how to tighten this cross guard um, now, but it hasn't ruined the sword, not by any means. So overall, I'm giving this as like top, like high marks. I'd give it almost like a seven out of 10. It's almost close to an eight, but I'm around that range. Really like it. and. Some of the biggest praise I have is the observations I had at the beginning, is this type of sword for the price range and the quality that you get that price range is particularly awesome. So really, really cool. Thank you very much for joining me in this sword review. I appreciate that. I hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell.